Yeah, so uh, this is the outline of my talk. First, I will do a small introduction about myself and uh, an introductory example to make you more familiar with uh, what is dependency confusion and make it more simple for you. Also, I will uh, show you PyPy and the packages, small overview, what is a dependency, what is typo squatting, dependency confusion, some real world examples and uh, some dodging techniques at the end. So who am I? I am uh, the guy on that picture. I'm still studying for my cybersecurity master's degree. Uh, at the same time, I work as a vulnerability management specialist at Ericsson. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm really enthusiastic about web security. And on my free time, I do some bug bounty hunting. I love Python, nature, and cats. A quick disclaimer before we start this presentation that uh, this, is, this content will be only for educational and awareness purposes only. So if you do something, do it at your own discretion and please don't involve this conference in that. Starting with the wrong phone number example, if you read my description of this talk, then uh, obviously you saw this wrong phone number example. And uh, suppose we have this um, two parties, let's say two sides A and B. So side A is the small phone and side B is the two receivers. And uh, suppose the guy or the girl with the phone like wants to phone call the upper person with the phone number 0012345. And there is another person on the planet which has kind of the same number but ending with six. So this is the situation. Um, our person wants to call the number ending with five, but actually they dialed the number ending with six. And um, yeah, this is the actual situation. What will be the result is that uh, unintended answers will be received. So please keep this small example in your mind and uh, just follow along. Moving forward to PyPy, I guess you are all uh, familiar with this interface since this is a Python conference. And uh, what is PyPy? It's just um, a small, like, uh, abbreviation for Python package index. And uh, it's a centralized, or imagine it as a very big repository which contains other small repositories. And uh, nowadays it contains hundreds of thousands of Python projects, which we call packages. And um, this is a small demonstration of how do we install packages from PyPy. We have three parties, we have the VS Code or you as a developer, we have pip, and we have Python package index or PyPy. Uh, so we need a package when we are developing something in Python. That's why we call pip and we tell it that we need this package, this specific package. Then pip goes and search for it in PyPy. If it's found, then the response is back to pip and the dependency is installed locally. And there is a small star that means that uh, pip needs to be installed from PyPy as well because it's a package too. And uh, there are a lot of package managers depending on the language which you are coding with. There is npm for JavaScript, PyPy. For Python, there is Ruby gems for Ruby and uh, Conda which contains a lot of packages, but uh, the scope of this presentation will be about PyPy because it's Python. And um, yeah, basically when you download and install a package from PyPy, then you simply trust the code which is hosted on that repository. So moving forward to what is a dependency, it's just a set of code which is going to be used in your project. So suppose you have a very big project and you need to perform a certain action, and uh, that action you don't want to develop it from scratch. You basically just download and install a package from PyPy and that's it. There are some uh, very famous examples like requests for making HTTP requests. There is pandas for data manipulation, beautiful soup for web scraping, and uh, many other packages. And uh, this is the kind of form to install a package using pip. You just do pip install, then the package name, and it's going to be installed following the method that we saw previously. 
And there is also requirements.txt file, which contains all the set of packages which your code contains. And uh, this is a small example of the requirements.txt and containing requests, flag, numpy, pandas, matplotlib, matplotlib. And uh, maybe we'll use all of them, maybe not, so it doesn't matter. Moving forward to typo squatting, does any one of you know what is typo squatting? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we have one guy who knows about it. Uh, it's basically a method which exploits the human stupidity or typos by registering false domain names. And we have this uh, example like github.com. So this is not an actual typo, but it's just an example to show you that when somebody is registering a domain which looks like this, then whoever goes to this domain, they will go to the attacker purchase domain, not the actual 404 or I don't know, like uh, this site can't be reached, like this screenshot. So technically, anyone in the world can go and uh, purchase GitHub with a v.com right now in the world and they can host a GitHub clone and uh, that's going to be a phishing website. So that's the idea of typo squatting. In uh, 2016, there was a BSc student in Germany and he took this idea and he transformed it to programming language packages and he did his uh, BSc thesis on that uh, called uh, Typo Squatting in Programming Language Package Managers and that's the link if you want to read more about it. And uh, these were the results, so he got 17,000 plus backs from uh, hosts that installed the typo squatted packages. 50% of them were uh, done with administrative rights and they were highly secured institutions as well, like .mil and .edu. Uh, moving forward to dependency confusion, which is a um, recently discovered vulnerability based on typo squatting. So it occurs when pip is confused about this dependency, whether it's like uh, there are three types of this dependency confusion. The first one is the package doesn't exist anymore or the sp there is no specified version in the requirements.txt or pip install and the package name is also misspelled. So let's go one by one uh, through these types. The first one is the package doesn't exist anymore. Suppose there is this um, requirements.txt which contains a mix of public and private packages as well. And uh, you can't see my mouse, or maybe you can using this laser. Yeah. So these are public, and these are internal lib x and y, which means they are uh, private packages. And uh, suppose there is this internal lib x, which has the version 1.0.0, and the developer wants to install this requirements.txt file. So they use the install r parameter for giving it the requirements.txt and add the index URL parameter to say that, okay, I want to fetch these packages from my artifactory, which is in this example, company.x. So this is a good and secure example. But the bad one is if the developer used extra index URL, this is where the problems happen and this should not be used. Why? Because the difference between both of them is that index URL, like just index URL, looks for the packages in the specified repository only, meaning only in the private package, the private uh, artifactory which is feeded in this parameter. But if you add extra, then people will also look for it in PyPy, and that's an issue because maybe the attacker will get uh, this requirements.txt and they can have an idea about the private package names and they can publish them on PyPy and it's going to be fetched. The second type is that if there is no specified version in your requirements.txt as you can see like this, and uh, there are some condition, conditions which are needed that the library should be internal, the extra index URL should be used in the uh, pip install command and the attacker should somehow know the package names. So they have to have this uh, requirements.txt list of packages. And uh, let's take this same uh, package, which is internal libx. 
they will just simply take that same name and they will upload it on PyPy, but they will give a very high number of version, like 99.99.99, and they will just suppose that uh, the company don't have a version which is this high. So PyPy will just simply go and fetch the higher version. They will not take the private one, but the higher version. The, yeah, automatically download and install the higher version from PyPy. The third and last case is that if the package name is misspelled, so suppose you have requests, not with a U, in your requirements.txt, and uh, this is the correct name of the package requests, so the attacker can also, in this case, upload requests without a U, and um, pip will look for it in PyPy. If it's found, then it's gonna download it. Uh, moving forward to some real-world examples which are applied by, um, which bug hunters applied this methodology of dependency confusion in huge uh, companies and they actually found it. Like uh, this, this um, report in uh, Basecamp, they found it in uh, RubyGems and they got $5,000 for it. The second example is Uber. Uh, it was an NPM misconfiguration, which is like RCE, remote code ex execution. So they had direct command injection in the internal computers of Uber, and they got $9,000 for it. The third example is in Yelp. Uh, Yelp was using PIP and uh, also RCE. They got $15,000 for it. And the last example is PayPal. PayPal, sorry, and it was in uh, NPM. So NPM is highly used because most of the companies use JavaScript, but PIP is also used as it was found in Yelp. But uh, yeah, PayPal have higher bounty amounts. Now let's move to dodging techniques. I don't know if uh, you are familiar with this dependency hashing which is basically including the hash of the package into your requirements.txt using this format. So the package name equals the version backslash and you do double dashes and double dash hash equals then the SHA value of the hashes. And um, you can just go to the pip documentation and search for secure installs and you will find the detailed uh, explanation of dependency hashing. The second one is dependency pinning, so you should always specify the exact version that you need and keep them updated, so whenever there is an update, just update the exact same minor or major version, and don't keep it outdated or just feed it without version, because that's a problem as we saw before. And uh, always try to prevent problems, prevent installing packages without checking, um, that means that you have to check whether the source is legitimate or not. The second one is that you should check whether public package registries contain the names, the internal names which your packages contain, and th that should not be free because you can basically just upload a dummy package which contains print hello world and just don't leave it free. The third one is that you have to perform regur regular security scans either by doing penetration tests or vulnerability assessments so that uh, security engineers will find this actual issue in your project and they will just report it for you. And of course, you can be creative in this part and um, prevent your project as you want. Also that you have to be always um, aware when it comes to security because as you saw, a very small mistake, a very small typo or just not using your package name somewhere else could lead to a disaster, as in uh, big companies, and you have to always aware your developers to, to be more, to develop in a more secured way. So that was it in my talk. Thanks a lot for your attention, and uh, you can just connect with me on Twitter, at SplinterSec. It's a bit <laughs> not good because I'm using PowerPoint, and I prepared it on Google Slides, but yeah, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Khalil, for your presentation. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. Uh, 
Uh, I, I have one question. I remember that uh, maybe several years ago, uh, some s the, some people found that there are malicious packages in PyPy and uh, maybe in, also in NPM as well. Uh, I wonder, do they do know? Do they have any uh, any plan or actions to clean up those uh, malicious package? Thank you. That's a good question because I have no idea about it. But I tried to upload the malicious package in PyPy for this conference, and it was removed one day after that. So I guess there is some security check, or I don't know. Okay. Yeah, you. yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. I was just wondering, do you know why there even is this um, option to include pip, the default pip um, repository in your search as well? Like, why hasn't that been removed if it's so obviously insecure? I actually have no idea why it's already there, like this extra index URL or just index URL. But I guess it's for um, like uh, the speed to download mm -hmm. your packages very fast. So pip looks for the closest option. Right, I mean, in X index URL makes sense, right? Because your company might have an internal repo with their Python packages, secure, yeah. approved versions. That makes sense. But the extra one just doesn't seem to make sense. Yeah, because sometimes in your artifactory, you may have a lower version of requests. Mm. But there is a higher one on PyPy, so people will just fetch it from PyPy instead. OK, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for your talk. Everybody, please give a huge round of applause to Khalil Lemonta. <laughs> <laughs>